Guys, what's up? I'm Jerry for all who don't know, and uh, today I'm making a guide in the evolution of combat, and it is a frost dragon guide. I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, we'll go ahead and move on with the guide. Okay, guys, let's talk about some of the requirements and the rewards. So, what you're going to need is, as you can see on the screen right now, you need 85 dungeoneering, a good weapon, good armor, and decent combat stats probably at least 80s 75s probably and uh, that's a pretty much the only requirements you really need um, being able to use most of the abilities really does help because uh, some of them are very good and uh, now let's look at some of the rewards you can see them on the screen right now um, for the rewards I uh, I calculated that it's going to be about anywhere from two to three mil per hour that depends pretty much on just how good you are how good your stats are and how good your gear is and then just how good you are at killing these things but uh... for the average player it's probably going to be about two to two point five mil an hour it's not going to be three unless you really are pro and if these dragon bones do go up then uh... obviously they're going to be it's going to be a lot more per hour and obviously i did calculate this using a terror bird if you have a, a tortoise or a yak, it's going to be more up towards the three mil mark. And let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the guy. So first off, let me just show you the uh, setup that I recommend using. But uh, first of all, I bring hal uh, house teleports uh, just so I can go ahead and recharge my prayer and uh, summoning really fast. And then uh, I have a super set. Obviously, you can change that out for an extreme set or a uh, or overloads. Then I use. I'm gonna skip this for now. I use prayer renewals. Just that gives you a little bit of extra prayer points. And then I have three prayer potions for an inventory and a terror bird. Now, usually I only use about two of these, but uh, I bring another one just in case. And the rest of my inventory I fill with sharks. Then in my terror bird I have empty. Um, obviously you can use whatever beast of burden you want and uh, that you can use. I don't fill my terror bird with food because I really don't need that much food. I don't need this much, but I bring it just in case, you know. But uh, for the setup here I use uh, reverence or penance, uh, helm of neon's not. Emil of Fury, Fire Cape, Bandos, Chestplate, Bandos, Tacits, Dragon Boots, Ganodermic Gloves, and then my Taco Zo Ring. Now, I recommend using uh, non degradable gear. You can obviously switch this out for Bandos Boots or Steads or whatever. And uh, switch this out for Barrow's Gloves if you have them. Or whatever other, you, uh, whatever other gloves you have. And then obviously you can switch this out for whatever you uh, you can upgrade it or downgrade it. Now for weapons, I I use the uh, chaotic maul. Now you can use pretty much any weapon you choose. The better it is, the more money you're going to make per hour, and the more XP you're going to get per hour. Now dual rapiers is probably the best because they are weak to stab, but you can also use the Maul or pretty much any dual Chaotix if you have them, or obviously Dry Gores. Um, now let's talk about protecting against their fire. Now you have three choices to protect from fire. You can use number one, a Dragon Fire Shield along with an Anti Fire. Number two, a Super Anti Fire, which obviously I don't have because you need 85 Herbalore. And number three, this is the one I'm using. You can use Protect from Magic along with an anti fire. Now, what this allows you to do is it allows you to block all of the fire while still using two handed weapons. So, a weapon in both hands instead of using a shield. So, your damage per second is going to be quite a bit higher. 
Now let's take a look at my ability bar. Obviously you should know how to use these by now. You got your basic basic abilities and you got your thresholds. I've got regenerate and I've got my overpower. But yeah, so let's move on to how to get there. Okay guys, now I'm going to show you how to get to Frost Dragons. Hopefully you have this is Port Serum. Hopefully you know where that is. Um this is the Port Serum Lodestone. You should have that unlocked. You're going to go ahead and teleport to here. And then you're just going to walk down south. Down to this dungeon on top of this hill. It is from the uh, Night Sword quest. And you should remember that. Also there is an altar right here that you can recharge your prayer at. And an obelisk as well. So as you come down here just use the obelisk. Use the altar. And then go ahead and go down the dungeon. So once you go down the dungeon. It's going to show you this. Um, you go down through here through here and then the frost dragons are going to be located right in this area right here guys so here we are at the mysterious entrance which is the entrance to the frost dragons and uh... so what we're going to do here is go ahead and pot up i've actually already uh... done a couple inventories myself so i already activated my aura but uh... yeah so let's go ahead and go in get the pr quick prayers ready And then go ahead and start attacking these guys. Um, I do recommend you use the best abilities and the best weapons that you have. Because you need to kill these guys really quickly or you get owned. They do this little blue orb ability thing. That deflects all damage you do to, the, do to them. So if you do an assault right when they use that. It can easily take you down or from full health all the way down to nothing and it has happened to me a couple of times so you really do need to be careful about that now I actually did commentate on the last inventory I did but um I found that while I was commentating I I was uh, not able to do quite as good I wasn't able to concentrate as much and so I was getting kind of owned by the uh, little blue orbs because I didn't notice they came when they did now if you do it just right you should be able to avoid the blue orbs right when they come and you shouldn't take any damage. The only time you'd really do it is like right if you're in the middle of doing an assault or something like that. Another thing is you want to keep your prayer pretty high because if it runs out, they can hit like thousands on you with um with their fire breath. So you do have to be careful about that as well. Um, another thing you can do is well actually um a lot of times they do drop sharks so uh, obviously that can help you survive as well and I think he might have just done the blue orb thing I, I, if he did he was dying at the same time so it doesn't really matter but um, here we go I use an assault um, if they do do the blue orb you just back away and then you can go ahead and attack another dragon while they're doing it so you don't waste your time and food and I do recommend that once you get a small amount of food, whoa. See, there he is. He does the little blue orb. And it can kind of own sometimes, as I said. Let's go ahead and use an ultimate on this guy. Ooh, that one wasn't bad. You do hit quite a lot of damage on here. I want to save my bird. Because what really went wrong last time was one of the dragons killed my bird with a bunch of bones in it. So that kind of messed up that uh, run or example run. Did I leave some bones behind over there? No. Alright, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to drop a couple sharks right here. Because I did fill my bird with food this time. Draw these. Withdraw those. Withdraw these. Withdraw. Uh, that'll do it. And go ahead and pick up these sharks. Use one on the bird. Obviously, usually I, uh, you don't have to do that because I don't always bring the... Uh, I usually do not bring food in my beast of burden. And uh, the better your beast of burden, the more money you're going to make per hour. And also, obviously, in a month, the frost dragon bones could have gone up a lot. Or they could have gone down a lot. 
Now right here you see I got a rune long sword. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up as well. Just because it's worth about the same amount. And uh, there's no need to kill an extra dragon to fill up your inventory. So it's basically like that dragon dropped me two bones instead of one. So obviously you do want to pick that up. So don't let your prayer drain. Pick that up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the rest of this inventory. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how much I did make. How much I made from this run. Now it depends how much how many pots you use. Obviously if you have overloads, you're going to have a little bit more space to have. Whoa. Whoa, see I almost died there from that assault. I barely escaped. So that can happen sometimes and you will die. It has happened to me a few times. I've probably killed about 500 of these things so far. And uh, I've died about three times, I think. But if you're careful, you won't die. Just keep your health high and you should, you should survive. Alright, so we'll go ahead and attack this one. Please don't use your orb thing right now. Alright, he's dead. Okay. We're getting close to wrapping up this inventory. Use that while I change out some of this. Uh, again, this is not the most efficient way to do this. There we go. Still got about a full inventory of food left. So, um will last a little bit longer. This inventory seems to be going great. Um, so don't let your prayer drop. Keep your HP, keep your hit points high, and uh, watch out for the blue orb of death. Pretty much is what you do. So yeah, let's go ahead and finish up this inventory as fast as I possibly can okay guys so I finished up that run it took me a couple more minutes but um here is the loot from that run uh, obviously I did drink uh, I just dropped these two potions even though I had some left in them because obviously a frost dragon bone is worth more than a potion so let's just go ahead and see how much uh, I made alright we got 20k and we got almost 500k for one inventory that took about 10 minutes. Now, obviously, they're not all going to be actually that good. Um, I have calculated that it is going to be about 2 to 3 mil per hour. 3 mil being if you have the best possible gear, and uh, which would probably be like full void and uh, dual rapiers or dual uh, dry gores. But yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, that about sums up the guide. Hope you guys make a lot of money doing Frost Dragon Bones. Just don't crash the prices too bad. <laughs> See you later guys. Bye.